So, today's webinar, we're going to cover ASP.NET MVC3, uh, the Razor engine, some of the highlights of the Razor View engine, and uh, the what it takes to get DevExpress MVC extensions working with the Razor View engine. And surprisingly, there's not much you have to do in terms of uh, getting our extensions to work with it. And uh, we make it a little bit easier by providing a couple of project types for Visual Studio. So, with that, let's get started. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I, I lost my audio there for a second. Okay. Um, all right. So the first thing is let's just go to the Microsoft page, ASP Net MVC. And if you want to find info about it, they've got it under this URL, MVC slash MVC3. I don't know why I have my caps on, but uh, anyways. So so far right now on the Microsoft page, you won't find a whole lot of uh, information here. In well, they, they're usually very good about providing videos and stuff. There is a lot of information, but right now it's mostly in the form of blog posts and release notes and so forth. Um, in the community, there's a lot of great uh, resources. Uh, for example, uh, Javier Lozano recently had the MVC Conf, and uh, I believe there were several great sessions there, and all these videos are hosted on the uh, DevExpress, uh, I'm sorry, on the channel, Microsoft Channel 9 property. So if you go under videos, you can find uh, Scott Guthrie's keynote and uh, all the different uh, speakers that they had lined up. So lots of great information there. Just now. Okay, so the other the relevant information for ASP.NET is mostly provided in a lot of these uh, blog posts from Scott um, Guthrie and uh, Phil Hack. So the Razor View Engine, um, what it is is a, it's a new view engine provided by Microsoft that is more fluid, cleaner, and easier to work with than the previous one, which is called the Web Forms View Engine. Now they called it the Web Forms View Engine not because necessarily it, it was um, it's the same one that was used with web forms, and that's why it was called the web forms view engine. And the reason they used that was because it was just easier, right? They had it available. It, it works, and you know all the tooling was so, there in Visual Studio, so it made perfect sense. However, it, it was a little bit uh, kludgy to work with in the sense that it, it, there was a uh, there was a lot of taxing with the angle brackets and so forth. So this new one is is much much easier to work with. So let Let's take a look at some of the differences in Visual Studio. So first of all, I'll just get started. Now, let me start off by telling you, um, if you're working with our MVC extensions, what you want to do is under the new project template, you're going to find Visual C Sharp under web. Um, now, I, I use C Sharp, of course. These are also available under Visual Basic as well. Um, however, I, I'm, I'm a C Sharp guy, so I'll stick with that. Now. In here, you, you see several templates. That's because I have two different versions installed. So I have 11.1, .1, sort of a pre-pre-beta that we're working on, and 10.2. So what you'll see is we have the standard MVC2 web application, and we have the uh, Razor. So the standard one uh, for MVC2, for MVC2, basically, we only had one project type, which is a, a one that created uh, sort of a a hybrid version of a pro project that included the login information and you know we found that a lot of customers didn't need that and it was kind of easy enough to add that yourself so in a more recent build what we did was uh, we introduced the MVC3 project type now we also changed the MVC2 version to reflect this but we got rid of sort of that login information and just provided a very empty template and of course with MVC3 because you have a choice of a view engine we provide two different project templates which is the ASPX extension and the Razor extension. So the ASPX corresponds to the Web Forms View Engine and the Razor to the Razor View Engine. So I'm going to select the MVC3 Web Application 10.2 Razor View Engine. Now I apologize for my voice. I am kind of getting over some uh, uh, recent coughing and cold. So, anyways, let's just call this MVC3 Demo Razor. Now, what this will this do when we when you select the DevExpress project? It will include all the project 
references that you need to work the DevExpress MVC extensions and, and set up the web config file as well as uh, give you a different looking project. So let's just take a quick look at this in action. Now, as you can see, this is very different than what you would see in the Microsoft one. We, we didn't want to throw in all the menus and everything like that. We wanted to leave this as bare as possible for you to just get started and start adding your own things. Because usually when you start a new project, you want to rip that stuff out anyway. So this is as close to an empty template that we can give you, as well as providing you enough of a sort of a base layout and so forth with all our references. So. For example, there's still a default layout, which doesn't really have anything in it other than our references. All right, so enough of that. Let's get started with the other differences. Now, the first thing you'll notice is Razor is a view engine, meaning that it's applied to your views. So here in the index, you see you have a new extension here. So index.cshtml is the new uh, extension for a view, a Razor view engine that's using C Sharp. And so, of course, VB would be VB HTML. Now, this is very different than the ASPX one. So, let's just show you. Now, in the MVC project, you still have the option to mix and match. So, for example, if I add a new view here, I can actually change and use the default view engine. So, let's just go ahead and add this, and I'll call this something like index old. And um, so this was actually going to give me an error because I'm using the uh, layout page that's based on the uh, Razor View Engine. So, but just to show you, if you try to do this, it's going to tell you it's invalid because match your page does not exist, and that's because we can't use the uh, Razor View Engine. So while you can mix and match it, you can't mix and match the Razor View Engine code with the WebForms View Engine code. So the first thing uh, that you'll notice is at the very top um, is there, there's a uh, page directive. Now, this page directive uh, is no longer necessary for the ASPX, I'm sorry, the Razor View Engine. So you'll notice that at the very top, it looks different. Now, yes, this is a uh, page based off of the uh, layout page, but uh, in general, this isn't there anymore. Now, you can still add this. So there's a way to add this to the Razor View Engine in case you need to define. But generally, what they've done is they said, well, we don't really, we don't need to have you define this page directory directive with the inherits because we already know. For example, C Sharp is based on the fact that this is an extension that ends in CS, HTML, and by default, everything is going to inherit from the System Web MEC View page. And if you want something different, then you can define that yourself. So, the other thing uh, you'll notice immediately is that there's no more of these angle bracket percent sign thingies, right? It's now just this ampersand, and this makes it much, much cleaner. So, let's take a look a little bit at the difference here. For example, we have this view at view bag message, and it's just started with the ampersand. In the uh, old style, if we wanted to do something like this, we'd have to put in angle bracket and then put in something like, uh, let's see, view data. And as you can see, this can get a little kludgy, right? Because uh, you're now putting in. Um, you're now putting in angle brackets. Now, Visual Studio helps a little bit in terms of starting and ending these for you, but you'll notice that as you go on and as you write more code, what will happen is you need to start these brackets and stop them and so forth. With the Razor View Engine, it's a smart parser, meaning that it knows that if I stop here and if I start typing in some text like uh, whatever the message is, uh, plus have a great day, then it knows it's going to stop evaluating this token and pick up and say, okay, well, this is just a string that belongs to the page. Now, in the WebForms View Engine, you have to be a little more explicit in terms of how this started and stopped. So even if I uh, put an ampersand here, 
I'm sorry, let's put it uh, ampersand here by putting in m here at devexpress.com. It is smart enough to know that, okay, this is an email and it's not going to evaluate it as part of the uh, code that we're uh, that we intended to when we call this view bag message thing. So that's just a, uh, a, m a much sort of a simpler explanation for how the Razor View Engine essentially works. Now, um, I want to cover a couple of other things before I show you um, what it takes to work with this in, with the DevExpress Envy's extensions. The view bag is a new uh, object or new a new type that's introduced with MVC3. Now, what it basically does is, if you remember, um, let's see if I can bring up the uh, let's just bring up an older uh, MVC2 project so that I can show you. So if you remember in MVC2, you had this view data dictionary type. Now, this view data dictionary essentially um, holds some, some uh, key value pairs for you. For example, whenever I, cre I created, uh, I put into this dictionary this uh, message and I gave it this value, right? And in MVC3, uh, what they said was, well, to work with this view data, you really have to you know, throw something in there, but it's not strongly typed, meaning that this view data, I can type in anything. I can type in message, but if I did this, then my code breaks here, right? For example, I don't know that this is a message anymore. So in MVC3, they made it easier for us by introducing that view bag, which is just a wrapper around the um, around the view data. So for now, if you take our home controller, we can say view view bag dot message, which essentially does the same thing as uh, what we did with the view data, and uh, puts in our. Uh, this is now the key, and this is still a value, but it gives us a strongly typed way of getting at that uh, view data information. Now, I'm going to remove this because I'm not going to use it. Now, actually, I don't need any of this, so let me just save that. Now, the other thing I want to mention is this uh, new way to do layouts, right? Um, you know what? Let me just start up another Visual Studio so I don't have to keep switching projects. So l this layout is a new way to do master pages. Now, uh, if you're familiar with MVC2 or even standard web forms, master pages allow you to create several pages, give them a default look. And this layout is uh, a little bit it's very similar to basically master pages, but there's some uh, differences. Now, if you want to read all about them, I'll, you know, oops, I'll recommend that you check out uh, Scott Guthrie's post, which I'll link to in this uh, blog post for this webinar. So let's bring up the MVC2 here. Uh, you you see this processing screen and so forth. That's because I have CodeRush installed, and I do recommend checking out CodeRush because it does make things a little bit easier. Um, actually, not a little bit, so, uh, very much easier. So, Ma Mark Miller is going to have a uh, special ASP.NET slash MVC based uh, webinar for what CodeRush can do for you with MVC. So, that's next week, and Amanda will tell you about that in a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look. In this shared folder, we used to have this master page, right? Now, if you take, let's switch back here. Now, if we take a look at uh, this page, you'll notice that the big difference is that, you know, it uses the Razor View Engine, and there's this new thing called Render Body. So Render Body essentially tells it the same thing that this content placeholder did, which is that this is where the uh, main uh, HTML will get rendered out, right? So uh, I don't want you to get too confused with it, but essentially uh, the new layout is just a way to specify this. But there are some, being this, this is MVC and a lot of this is based on convention or configuration, um, they, they've changed around some things. For example, in the MVC2 web application, 
uh, you'll notice that we actually defined that this page was deriving off of a specific master page. So in MVC3, notice that we don't have this. Even though I know this index page derives off of, excuse me one second, All right, sorry about that, Amanda. My voice is going a little bit there. So I know that this web, this page is deriving off of this default layout, but how does it know this? Well, the way it knows this is they've introduced this file called viewstart.chhtml that says any file in this views is going to use this layout, right? So it's already defined here. Now we can change this if you introduce a new one, or we can actually add this to individual views. So I can under home have a different layout.chhtml, or I can even be more explicit at the tar I'm sorry, at the top of this and define which layout I want to use. But for now, this works, and uh, you know, it, it's. I would say if you're going to have multiple layouts. That's one thing definitely look into. However, if you're going to stick with the default one, there's really no need because uh, this will this setup will work just fine for you. All right. The next thing I want to mention is uh, there are a couple of other new things they've introduced, like the model keyword. Now, when you first create a, a page, um, you'll notice that you have the option. So let's go ahead and add this a new view. You'll notice that you have the option to create a strongly typed view. Now, we don't actually have any model uh, set up yet, but if we did, we can say that, hey, this view that I'm defining, I want it to be strongly typed, meaning that I'm going to pass it a certain type of view model, and that's the model I want to take information from. So we have an option to do that. And when we do this, it will actually create and add a model keyword at the top, which will look something like this, model, as well as whatever model that we're passing in. And this makes it a little bit easier. So, and that's very akin to how we would pass uh, not just the inherits for this thing, but the model here as well. So that's something new in MVC3 as well. For us, however, in, in uh, for a DevExpress MVC extension, you'll notice we're going to do a, a, just a little bit slightly different and use the inherits tag. And uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. Right. The other thing is um, delimiters. Now, you'll notice that most of the code for razors just starts with ampersand, right? Oops. However, you have an option to say, well, I want to put this in a block. And you, you can see they've done this here. But you can use this open bracket and close bracket to define several other things. So if I wanted to have another view bag message, uh, if I wanted to grab it, I could have called it something like my message if I had defined my message and just call it. So this just this is a way to save you from having to type the ampersand a, a bunch of times if you don't need it to. Um, the other thing is comments. Comments are a little bit different. So previously, you know, when we commented something out, we've uh, we could have used the what was it? I think it was left this thing and that would comment out and that's uh, similar to the old ASP.NET, but in um, Razor, we can use ampersand and asterisk and type in a bunch of stuff and this is essentially just commented out code. So uh, it's just a way to remember that if you were doing a lot of uh, testing that this is an easier way to just simply add this in there. So it won't, it won't evaluate anything in here. So even if I put in something like, you know, um, oh, I don't know, get date time or something like that. It'll still save it as comment until I remove those items. Excuse me one second. Okay, so let's get started and add a grid view to this and uh, show you what's necessary. So let me first bring up a... Uh, a code central example that we've created to help you as well. So 
if you if you're interested, we've also got this pro this what I'm going to demonstrate is also available to download. So if you go to this devexpress.com and actually if you just go to devexpress.com slash example example equals E2837, it'll bring you to this thing which says how to use the Razor View Engine for, with DevExpress for MVC. Now we prepared this just so you can see how easy it is to work with uh, DevExpress MVC extensions. And essentially in this one what, we, what we're showing off is the default project type that I just started up as well as uh, how to add a grid view in here. So what you're going to notice is there isn't a whole lot of difference, for example, other than this ampersand thing. Now, that's not to say there aren't differences for Razor. It's just that for us, you know, uh, you're still going to use the HTML helper class, which makes it super easy to declare the uh, grid view as well as the other extensions. And in this one, we're declaring a default grid view and setting up a pager, uh, pager template uh, by adding uh, some custom buttons and so forth in the pager template. Now. The great thing about these code central examples is they're all downloadable. So if you hit this download, the very first time it'll ask you if you want to. Uh, now I'm running this in Chrome, but if you don't have it installed, what I what I recommend is get the example runner. And this this thing you only download once. But once you download it, these DS example files when you open them, they open them right into your Visual Studio. One second, let's get rid of this guy. So, you can also view this online. So, if you just want to take a look at the code and see, well, let me see what exactly this thing does, it, you can also execute it online. So, this is an MVC3 application using Razor with the custom page or template. So, that if I wanted to, I can go to, let's say, the third page, or I can go to the last page, previous, or first. So, Let's see how we can achieve that same thing ourselves. Now I'm going to get rid of this index old. I don't really need it. So now we're back to the default page that we get with the project template. Now the first thing we're going to need is some data. And that means we're going to have to set up a model. So let's right click and add a new link to SQL class. Go to data. I'm going to pull in something called artist from a table that we have. Uh, if you've installed the experience 10.25, we released a WinForms application actually that was a sample to show off how to um, how to work with our uh, uh, MVC. I'm sorry, our WinForms stuff. Anyways, what I like about it, it, it provides you a database in your local uh, SQL Server or SQL Express. Now I have SQL Express and it's called Video Rental but it's got a bunch of uh, things, so a bunch of tables that are useful as well that have uh, great linkage and information and so forth and it just shows off uh, movies, artists, directors, things like that. Now I, I like it because it's not Northwind. Now Northwind is great but you know we tend to use it so much that it's nice to see some different information now and then. So here's my artist table, and I've got things like artist birth name, country, location, biography, nickname, and so forth. Now I'm just going to pull in this table, but I could pull in some other ones. Now um, I know that uh, really I'm only going to be showing a few of these names, like birth name, perhaps country, and nickname. Um, the biography is going to be kind of a big uh, memo field, so I'll probably ignore that for now, just for this demo. Now the now, whenever we pull in a model and we save it, it's always best to compile it. So let's go ahead and build this. Because this is a class, you know, we're not going to be able to use it until we compile it. And now we're successful, we can start referencing in other areas of our uh, project. So, what I usually like to do is, uh, I, you know, I, I try from the home controller to take a look at uh, sort of what actions I'm going to re return. Now, the first thing is we, we have our artist and to get at this artist we're going to need to create a data context and so forth, right? So what I usually like to do and we, we demonstrate this inside of the uh, inside of the uh, sample as well. Let me bring that up. Sorry, and uh, 
So one of the things uh, you'll notice is inside of here, we've got a class called Northwind, right? Now, this, this class resides in your uh, models folder, and it's a way to create separation of concerns. Because you don't want to put uh, database-bound code inside of your controller, it, it's best to pull that code and put it somewhere separate. So I'm actually going to uh, do something very similar to this and just uh, make this code um, sort of the uh, default. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to create a static class so I can reference it from uh, my grid view partial as well. So it's a, and it's a good idea to do this because what it does, it takes care of repetitive code but also creates that separation as I just mentioned. So let's go ahead and do that. Right click, let's go add, and let's add a new class here, and let's call this, um, this came from the video rental, so I'll call it video rental, in case I add other information to my view or another view model, I can simply use this to get at all that information. Now, we want to start by creating a public class, so um, let me just show you one little thing that uh, I really like about Code Rush. Uh, let's see, two windows. Excuse me. Uh, I think it is the Code Rush window. Yes. So this is a little, if you're not used to Code Rush, this little training window makes it a little easier. So if I wanted to, I can start off here and type in something like C, and you can, t and right away, what it's doing is showing me a bunch of template expansions that I might be able to do, right? So here, I can create just a, a class. So if I hit just space here, it's going to create a class for me, or I can go a little bit further and create a, a certain type of class. For now, uh, let's just create a class. And I will call this uh, my video rental provider. And you'll notice that it also created a uh, constructor for me. Now, I'm going to make this a static class. I don't really need that constructor. And be sure to put in static here. Now, You'll notice that uh, the uh, artist has a data context, and that's what I want to create here. So uh, right now, I'm able to reference it because we're inside the same models view folder. But if I was in the view, it wouldn't know this unless I added a reference to mc 3 uh, demo razor models. For now, this will, and that's another reason why this class is going to make this a little bit easier. So I'll simply call this something like DB. Now, uh, and actually, you know, I could probably make uh, this creation a little bit easier as well, right? So, for example, if I was going to create a method, then I can just hit M, and um, I believe S should give me a, uh, let's see, maybe not. Okay, so uh, CodeWish was smart enough to figure out, because it's a static class, that it's going to create a static method for me. So I want to make sure this is... Uh, 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 set to public as well as change the uh, void parameter to return the uh, artist data context. Now the method name I'll actually call this uh, something like DB. It won't take any parameters and it's simply just going to have a get method and all this is going to do is check for me if my local uh, variable that I created called DB at the top is null, and if it is, oops, and uh, if it is, then uh, I'm going to create it. So new artist data context, and return it. So what this does for me is it basically makes sure that this artist data context exists. And now I can reference this. Oops. Oops. 
Mm, got some kind of error right here. Okay, so I'll get back to that in just a second. So now I need to actually make a method that lets me get at those uh, artists, right? So let's make a new method, and we're going to call this, uh, it's going to return an enumerable. So let's see if there's a way CodeRush can make this a little bit easier for me. Uh, I, want, I know I want I enumerable. Uh, so I believe it is M, I, I thought it was M I E. Yes, so M I E dot will create a template for me that uh, lets me pass in some uh, information. So I'm going to send an enumerable. I want to make this public as well. And I'll call this get artists. And this is simply going to return. I'm going to write a little bit of link here from uh, artists in db dot. Oops. Uh, it doesn't know what i enumerable is. Okay, so let's add that. Okay. System collections, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. Mm, all right, so one second. I got some kind of weird error here. Ah, okay. There we go. So, uh, it, it thought it was a... Yeah. I wasn't passing in parameters. So anyways, uh, let us fix that. And yeah, okay. So we need to have a return value from here. So now we can say db.artist. Select artist. So this is essentially going to return to me all of the artists inside of the table. Now I could have probably just e easily some, said something like return db dot, you know, oops, artists. But uh, the link gives you some flexibility in terms of if you want to have any custom link and so forth. All right, so let's make sure this compiles. Excellent. All right, so now we're going to need a, a couple of uh, items for displaying the grid view. Now, normally, uh, what we do is we create a partial page. Now, I can do that from directly here. So, I usually like to show that if you're going to create a grid, um, what it does, it does callbacks. And to do callbacks properly, you're going to need to a partial page so that the callback has a way to uh, call itself, right? So, the first thing I usually say is, okay, let's say we're going to put our grid inside of the um, uh, a new page, a new view. So let's just add a new view here. And we'll call this grid view. And we're not going to make it strongly typed and it's going to take the default layout. So here, um, I'm going to remove the, uh, there's no header here, and this is where I would make a call. So call partial page. And I don't really need to show the uh, the view back. So essentially, this is just a sort of a holder that says, okay, I'm going to have a partial page, and this is where it's going to expand it out to when I call this grid view page. So let's go ahead and create that. The, the one thing I do need, though, is I'm going to need uh, a way to call that from the home controller. So let's create that. Now, one other thing CodeRush has added is uh, uh, another method to create method action results. So if you put in MMAR in its spacebar, you can see it creates this for us. And of course, I'll call this grid view. And once again, this is because uh, MVC does convention uh, over configuration, meaning that you know it's gonna it's gonna look. When we, if we do something right now where it says return view, I can return any view. I can return a specific view. In fact, I can give it a name here. So if I do control space, you can see here I can pass in a I view name. I can pass in a model or a specific view name, meaning that I can put in something like grid view here, even though I'm in the index page. However, if I don't pass anything, it's going to look for a view of with the name index, which exists here, which is why I, you want to call this uh, similar to whatever your uh, name is. So, um, 
let's remove that, change that public. Uh, by the way, I can change the uh, CodeRush template to remove this since I already have a reference up here, it's not necessary, but it just assumes that you may not have a reference to that. So, all right, so now um, I'm simply going to return the view here. However, that view, uh, I'm gonna need some data, right? So what I wanna do here is I wanna make sure that um, I call the proper uh, uh, method from within the video rental file here, right? So the first thing we need to do is I need to get a reference to the models page. So let's add that up here. So we're going to using MVC3 demo razor dot models. And now what I can do is because I've already defined a static method, I can simply pass in so I don't have to actually go here and go artist, data context, uh, ADC is equal to new, uh, artist data context, and then, you know, call ADC dot artist, right? And because, you know, if I was, I was going to do that multiple times, then that gets a little redundant. Plus, it doesn't give me access to the, sort of that link that I want or that separation of concerns, right? So. Uh, instead, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, do a little, uh, uh, DI here and just go uh, video rental, uh, and it's actually provider. Oops. Yeah. So for uh, why is it not seeing our ah? Okay. So. So we're going to call our video rental provider. Dot get artist and this will get that uh, call that method as well as passing that I enumerable to this view which will then pass it to the partial page for it to use so this just makes it a little bit uh, nicer cleaner to work with now so far we've got a grid view but uh, we've defined the the initial view but we don't actually have that partial page yet so let's do that now this time I'm gonna do it a little bit different I'm gonna actually create the uh, method action first uh, and then create the view off of it. So here I'll just create another one. I'll call this grid view partial. And uh, it's not going to take any parameters. I want to make sure this is set to public. And here um, the one thing I do know is that it's going to essentially need the same information. However, uh, you know, you got to be careful when you cut and copy code. Now, because this is going to be a partial page, you can't just return a view. We're going to be returning actually a partial view. So we want to make sure that uh, when you're returning that, you return a partial view, not the full view, because we're inside. Uh, this call is going to be done from a partial page. So now I can go. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Visual Studio does is for you in CodeRush does well is it lets you uh, declare the view so and I can also right click on this and go add view so what it does is it, it grabs the view name that you intended which is grid view partial and uh, here once again I'm not going to strongly type it um, instead we're just going to use the layout but one thing important is we want to make sure we click this create as partial view and what this will do is it's going to use a project template that's similar to uh, let's see, right click new item. It, it would be similar to the MVC3 view user control, uh, except it would be uh, this one, MVC3 partial page and not the uh, web phone's view user control. So here, because it's also you inside of this view, it's using this view start so it knows it doesn't need any specification at the top for the layout and we can essentially just start declaring our view now for dev express we want to add a couple of things now um, we're, we're working on this but right now you need to add a couple of using clauses using dev express dot web dot mvc dot ui and I'm gonna add this oops and basically, so those are the two references you need. And from here, we can start using uh, the um, HTML helper classes that let you define any of the Dev Express things, extensions. So we start typing HTML dot Dev Express dot 
And here I can do all sorts of extensions here. So you got everything from editors to HTML editor to grid view. And uh, let's just add that grid view here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to define the uh, settings for the grid view. So I'll call this settings. Some uh, fluent code here. And set up some things like, oops, uh, let me make sure I call this uh, settings, not setting. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to set up its name. Now, if uh, I want to make an important point here. If this was a, uh, let's say, for example, HTML.DevExpress. Dot. If this say, let's say this was a label or a text box or something like that, um, yeah, let's do that. So, text box. Um, it's important for you to specify, uh, let's say, settings. It's important for you to specify a proper name, right? And th this uh, this came up. Uh, by the way, if you notice, uh, you don't need this semicolon with razor. And uh, however, uh, when we were defining the block with our HTML extension, meaning that when you started this, you will need it. Okay, so just to kind of differentiate it, um, this this name property. If you're intending to strongly bind this with a property in artist, so let's take a look in the artist again. I'm sorry, that's where we go. The designer.cs file. Um, we'll see that we have a table here called artist. And then we got all these fields. And let's say I want to bind this to birth name or something like that, right? Well, I wouldn't want to. Uh, let's see, preview partial. I wouldn't want to call this something like. Uh, you know, be name and expect it to data bind strongly because this is even with standard Microsoft editors, what it is, and this once again comes again okay, well, uh, as an MVC thing. And when I say thing, an MVC convention, meaning that it's going to look for uh, because this, you know, you would have something like uh, because we're passing the model in here already, it knows that it's going to look for an item in that model based on this name. So if you're going to strongly bind it, then you would give it a, a name similar to something like birth name. Not similar. You want it to be exactly the same name as the model field that you intend to bind it to. So that's just <coughs> oh, oh so, sorry about that. Uh, accidentally hit the mute button there. <laughs> yes. So I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, yeah, it, essentially, uh, y you want to make sure that model name is the same name, but this grid view name does not need to be that same thing. Essentially, because we're not binding to one field, we're binding to several fields. All right. So. Uh, after setting up that, uh, it's important to set up uh, something called callback route values. Now, because the MVC, our MVC uh, grid does a lot of things using AJAX and callbacks, what this callback route values does, it allows a grid to say, okay, if I have to do a callback, where do I go? Where do I make this callback? And this essentially does that routing for it. So we're going to say new, open bracket, and specify the controller to go to. And we're going to go to the home controller and the action that it's going to take when it has to do that callback. And so here, I'm going to say grid view partial. Now, if you remember, we defined this first. So that way, um, we can essentially uh, know that whenever there's a callback that occurs, it's going to go to the home controller and then call this action method called grid view partial. And what that does, if you remember, it simply says, okay, I'm going to return a partial view with the get artist. And then the grid is smart enough to take care of things like paging, sorting, uh, summaries. Um, anyways, and, and I'll get back into that in just a little bit. But those are some very powerful features.
So for example, now let's add a, uh, uh, let's define the width. I want to make sure settings.width is equal to system web. Actually, we may not need this. Let's see, unit. Yeah, it's not there. So um, if, I'm, if I put this reference at the top, then I wouldn't need to go through the whole system web dot UI dot web controls dot unit dot percentage and then pass in some value like 100 so that basically says I want to make I want to have a grid that's 100 percent wide now when we set up a uh, a column so if, you, if I didn't define any columns right now it would go ahead and add all the columns that it found in there and the grid is smart enough to know what types to use so for example if I saw a date type it will give the proper drop down editor for that. So for this, I'm actually going to define the columns because I only want a few of the, the columns myself. So the first thing is I want to uh, go to settings.columns. Dot add. And this method, I'll just simply pass it a name. So I know I want birth name as one of the columns. And I also want to add. Let's see what we have available. So besides birth name, we have birth location, nickname, and let's just use those for now. Now, I'm not using birth country because it looks like it's a field that goes to another table. So had I pulled in, uh, let's say, another table, if you take a look at here. Uh, yeah, so there looks like there's a country table, and that's probably where birth country is linked up to. So let's go back to our partial page and add uh, nickname and birth location. Okay, so essentially now I have everything I need to display um, the grid, right? So now I can uh, close this off and call the bind method. Oops. Now, and essentially here, we're simply going to pass it the model. Now this is the information, the ienumerable that we sent from here, which is uh, an ienumerable of all the artists that we did using that link query. So here, we can simply say model. Now, one important difference here is Typically, in MVC2, uh, we, we had a render method. Now, you don't need that method anymore because in MVC3, we, we use a get HTML method. And it essentially, it does the same thing. So if you want, let me see if I can show you this topic. It basically returns the extension's rendered HTML code, right? Meaning that the uh, MVC HTML object is specified HTML encoded string and, uh, you know, it's similar to the render method, but in, in essence, this is uh, what we use for MVC3 Razor. So now let's save this and go back to our grid view page. Now we're not actually calling the page, so there's no way it's going to show up right now. So let's make that call. So what we want to do here, <coughs> excuse me. Let's call this. Call this HTML dot partial because we're call, making making a call into the partial page here and send it the name of the partial, which here is grid view partial. And we want to make sure we send it the model. So the very first time this code gets executed, oops, by the way, as I mentioned, you don't need that semicolon there, but um, the very first time this um, gets called, it says uh, that on the initial view it's going to create the view for the grid view passing this model and this grid view essentially then makes a call into the grid view partial to define that okay so let's make sure this compiles yes okay now if we take a look at our home page index there's nothing so it doesn't even have a reference to grid view at all right so at this point you you might want to consider um, either putting in a link in here, so I can put in some kind of action link or something like that says uh, HTML dot action link 
and I'll call this something like get artists. And the action name here would be grid view. Now, I can do that, or I can simply bypass that altogether. So when, when I hit this index action, I can put something like grid view, which is going to make a call to this guy, which says, okay, I'm going to display the grid view, which is then going to display the grid view partial page. So uh, for now, I'm just going to simply bypass it and just show the grid. Now, theoretically, I could have simply bypassed the grid view altogether and put this in here, but you know, in case you wanted to add a menu, in case you want to have some default information on that index page, I wanted to make it a little bit separate. So let's compile this and execute it. Boy, we're running a lot longer than I thought. Um, but we're getting towards the end here. So, um, all right, so get artist, click that. Ah, but I, ah, okay, so uh, here's the little important bit of uh, thing that I want to make sure. So um, as I mentioned before, one of the things about MVC is, uh, MVC3, is that it does not define at the very top the, um, what the page inherits from, and therefore it passes in just as dynamic. And so that's where uh, we have a little bit of an issue with our uh, grid view. So what we want to do is I want to go back to my grid view here and define at the very top the inherits clause. So be sure to add this. And I'm going to call it page. Now the difference is that, you know, this, I'm telling it that it's not taking in any specific model. And if I don't, you know, if there's, a, if there's not a null one defined, that pass in uh, that dynamic version, right? So in this case, it doesn't actually send in anything because I'm intending to send that model myself through the home controller. So now let's take a look at this in action. By the way, I guess I should probably mention, you're probably wondering that why when I hit, uh, when I defined the... Uh, that thing as get artist is because uh, it actually hit the view and to show the action link first, right? So I could have just defined an action altogether, which would have just simply redirected it to this grid view. Anyways, so when we hit our grid view page, you notice that um, now when I click on three here, it does the paging for us, right? But I'm gonna I'm gonna break this for a second because the callback routes are already defined for you because. Um, a common error that I see a lot of people ask is, hey, you know, I saw this weird message pop up, right? So let's say, we go back into grid view, and let's say I called, uh, let's go back into the grid view here as well, and let's just say I call this, oops, or something like that, meaning that I didn't define the right action or something like that, or I defined the wrong home page or home controller. Let's take a this in action. So the very first time, the grid will appear, right? The grid has no issues. However, when we go to do a callback, you're going to get this weird, ugly-looking error that doesn't really tell you what the heck happened. <clears throat> when you see something like this, especially on a callback, you should, you should be kind of suspicious. suspicious and, well, you should, your first place to look is inside of the callbacks, right? And make sure that you've properly defined that callback, right? So if we go back here, we can take a look here and say, yes, we had a problem. So make sure that these callback route values are all defined properly. So let's take a look at this in action. Excuse me for one sec. Okay, so now uh, you can see we have our grid view with sorting defined. We've got our uh, paging all working nicely. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of stop here. I want to mention one other thing. Um, 
One of our uh, customers in the DevExpress forums has created this little CodePlex project, which uh, if you want to jump into, uh, is kind of interesting. So far, it's just an MVC2 um, template uh, for scaffolding our grid, right? Meaning that uh, all the stuff that you saw me define in the partial page here is can be sort of picked up. Now, it's an MVC2 template, but he's looking for help, so you can actually define an MVC3 project template. So let's say for example, uh, you know what, let me just bring up MVC2 project that we had earlier. And let's uh, quickly add a, a model here. I'm going to do this a little bit quickly so this can look a little ugly. I need to find a proper name and all that, but I, I want to show off that uh, template. Now, I should show you where that project is. So, once you download it, what it is, it is, uh, it'll be this code templates file, and inside the code templates is this um, uh, template that you would throw into uh, a specific folder. So, it's this list partial with DevExpress Good View. And it is it, it defines some uh, conventions in there. So I'll show you that it can save you some code, but it's also useful if you're going to use a lot of our editors and so forth. That this is uh, sort of a, a good way to get get it done faster. So what you would do is you throw it into your Visual Studio Program Files, uh, Visual Studio 2010, Common 7, IDE. I believe it was item templates web. I'm sorry, C sharp uh, web MVC two code templates add view. So this is the custom one that we provided, right? Hang on one second. Okay, now. This this if this seems a little complicated uh, or this it's hard to remember this, um, I will do a blog post about this uh, or I'll ask the uh, Codeplex guy to make sure to add the uh, that reference in there. But essentially, this is a what's called a T4 template, and it's a great way in Visual Studio to uh, do things like this scaffolding and so forth. Right. So let's go ahead and uh, get that reference. So in this one, let's add another table from Video Rental. I'll pull in customer. Uh, you know, I don't really want all this. I'm just going to show a couple of fields like uh, customer ID and so forth. All right, that's pretty good. Save, build. Okay, so now I can go into our views. And let's add a new view here. And I'll call this grid view. Actually, yeah, let's call it grid view partial. Create a partial view. Actually. And okay, so if we create a strongly typed view with the customer as a model, then this T4 template, what it'll do is it's going to create a DevX grid view with a couple of links for setting up edit and so forth, right? But you can create any one that you want, right? So it's going to default off the master. So I'll go ahead and click add. So as you see, what it did is it went ahead and created this for you. Now the, the cool thing is it picked up on that model and said, okay, well, these are the columns that I wanted to use, right? But if I don't actually want to display something like, you know, OID, I can remove that. And notice that it also defined a um, command column for us and set up a couple links for edit and delete and so forth, right? Now, the key thing, though, here is you want to verify, because this is somebody else's T4 template, that it properly... Um, uh, routes to everything uh, right. So the first thing is I know that uh, there is no uh, uh, this controller doesn't actually exist, right? So right now 
I want to make sure that this goes to home and it's the action is not called index partial but I'll be calling it view, grid view partial so if we go back to our home controller create this and I'll call this grid view partial and I'm gonna make some quick and dirty code here using dev express dot models and I'll call this customer uh, data context I believe it was called ah no it's called data classes so data classes one dot data context and I'll call this uh, my DC new and here we're going to return a partial view and send it the my DC dot customers and now we'll make sure the index page is calling that render partial and the uh, partial name will be grid view partial all right let's take a look at this in action okay, so one thing is you know sometimes it's acute from the uh, wrong view it tries to go there so let me see routing won't work properly so just remove that bit of code so that it'll hit the uh, action at the view first all right so uh, apparently I don't have enough information in that partial page but you can see that it set up the grid uh, it set up the uh, partial page for us and saved us a bunch of uh, typing for us so I recommend if you're interested you know help contribute to this project and uh, you know uh, I'll be working with our HP.net team and see maybe if we might provide something like that but you know whenever you have any type of specific T4 template you want to make sure that while it helps you that you also make sure that the uh, values that you're passing in are, are correct so uh, with that I'm just going to show you a couple of other links to check out now as I mentioned Scott Guthrie has a, a, a ton of great posts so in this one uh, the introducing Razor view engine post I think I linked to this post from my original blog post which Ah, yeah so in my original blog post here I did mention uh, Scott Guthrie's post and you can find it as well as if you if you don't use our project templates you'll have to do things like this which is add the references yourself which isn't hard but uh, I recommend using the project template because it makes doing all of this easier now the only gotcha with Razor for us was making sure you use the get HTML and if you're going to use um, if you need to uh, call the right to light right line to response uh, method then we have a specific helper that lets you do that um, so yeah definitely check out Scott Guthrie's post because he goes into a lot more as well as all the other new things inside of ASP.NET MVC and you can find all that by going to ASP.NET MVC MVC 3 you can find our specific examples I'll make a blog post with a link to all of these uh, but specifically, this is the one that you're probably interested in, which is E2837. Oops. Uh. All right, with that, Amanda, I'll open it up um, while we take questions, and I'll also show off. Uh, excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. I'll also uh, show off our. Uh, online demo MVC extensions. Amanda? Yeah. Um, oh, we do have one question. I was just <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you were done talking. Uh, yeah. will Dev Express helper dot right line to response be needed in the next version? Um you know I'm not sure yet. Um hang on one second. You know, by the way, we there was a poll that we were going to do, right? Um, you know, I'll get back to that question in just a little bit. So, um, uh, 
in the meantime, let me let me hit that poll really quick. So we'll leave this up for a little bit uh, while uh, while people are asking questions and so forth. Okay. Um, will it be necessary? Um, not sure yet, Demir. Uh, you know, we're always looking to improve this. Uh, so I would say that you know, you know, uh, there there are things even that I showed right that sometimes we'll look at it and we'll say you know there's a better way to do this or you know we don't really want to do this uh, this way. So for example, you know I showed the uh, that project template, but if you'll notice this project template is a little bit different than than. Um, what you would see from the uh, MVC one, right? For example, uh, well, this one doesn't show it, but um, let's just go file new project. ASP.NET MVC3 web app. Interesting, okay. You'll see that there's a way, even with uh, MVC3, that if it's not empty, you can create a unit test project. Now, we don't define this in our project template because it's easy enough to add this yourself. However, if a lot of people are requesting this, then we'll find a way to add that to our dialogue. But we just didn't want to create a whole bunch of extra work, create a custom dialogue when you know we can piggyback off the one Microsoft makes. So you know, because you know. It's the same reason Microsoft didn't introduce the Razor View engine and ended up using the default one because there's a lot of work that goes into even creating, for example, a default uh, dialog like this because a lot of testing has to go into that tooling support. So, as I mentioned, we're always looking to improve that kind of stuff, um, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably do it if there's a lot of requests for it. Okay, okay did uh, I, Chris. Mm -hmm. What's the best practice to bind a model property to the HTML editor? Uh, okay, so I, I would recommend uh, taking a look at um, this here. Now, the, the thing about the HTML editor really is, you know, there's really only one field, right, that you would bind, bind to, and that is the, uh, the HTML content field here, right? So when you say that, you know, um, my recommendation is to consider it more like, you know, you're going to be grabbing the information, you're going to be doing more load and save, not necessarily, it's not like a text box, right? So for example, a text box is one that you definitely want to strongly bind to. But uh, the HTML editor, um, you know, usually you want to pull that information, uh, by the way, let me stop the poll here. Okay, so uh, thanks. Ruth had an important point here. Uh, you guys couldn't see anything because uh, I forgot to turn that poll off. But anyways, um, yes, if we take a look at this HTML editor here, uh, you know, even in our example, right, you'll notice that, you know, we're not doing anything particular in terms of uh, saying, hey, this is strongly bound to a field, right? Uh, in, in my opinion, you know, you, you normally want to, load that information and save it back and so forth. So uh, th does that help Chris? I mean if you're talking about let's say uh, the data editors, right? Those, yeah, for sure you want to make sure that you use the proper names. As I mentioned here that you know this label it's going to strongly bind to this, I'm sorry, this text box is going to strongly bind to a name property. Then I want to make sure that it's called name. So, for example, it's strongly bound to the model name property or the H property. Then you use a proper name for this uh, settings property here. Okay. So, uh, what other questions do we have? Uh, let's see. Can you create a grid view in with editable cells? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so inline editing, I think that's his question. Uh, we are, we didn't introduce inline editing with uh, the last release. 
in 11.1, we're going to be introducing that. So right now, if you notice that this takes you to a different uh, partial page altogether that shows you know separate editors and so forth. And so when you hit cancel, it takes you back to the grid view. But in the next version, 11.1, which should be coming out in the sec early second quarter, which is uh, around April, May, or something like that time frame, um, inline editing will be supported. Uh, by the way, uh, I think it was Chris. Chris, uh, you know what? I, I have your email, and I'm going to follow up with you about your HTML editor question to see. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, can you post that question to the support? So if you go to uh, if you go to our support center, so if you go to click on you know uh, support up here and ask a question, just simply post that uh, question because. Uh, you know, and I recommend keeping it public so it could be helpful for others as well. But I think there might be a, a way to do it with the uh, with the model binders. Uh, if you want, um, oops. I, by the way, Amanda, my email is mehul at devexpress or mehul h at devexpress. Um, you're oh, probably okay. thinking of email. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just it was just a. No worries. Brain. No worries. There we go. So uh, let's see. It looks like uh, Radek has one. How to create a grid view using custom template but show a checkbox field instead of true false text? Ah, okay. So let's see. Um, okay, I think we have a, uh, a, a an actual demo for this. Um, Uh, let's see if I can find a demo for this. Uh, essentially, what you would want to do is you'd want to change the type of uh, template that's used in there, right? So let's see if I can show you guys. Uh, I, I don't mean uh, necessarily template, but I meant the type of co a column that's used, right? So uh, let's go back to our demo here. I'm using a, uh, a virtual box here, and that little uh, menu keeps coming up from there. OK, so for example, here, the column that I'm adding is simply going to create a standard column, right? But what, you, what you'd want to do is you, you can get a, you can add a different type of column altogether. And uh, uh, let's go back, oops. Um, I don't know if there's a sample already ready, but you know what we'll do is we can create one. Uh, let's see, check box. I think I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that I've seen this uh, somewhere, but. Um, So it's one of the MVC grid view column types. Um, it's not the uh, show uh, select checkbox. That's just to show the uh, checkbox for selection. Ah, yes. OK. So let's see if maybe this will kind of uh, show you. Um, anyway, so let me, let me get back to you on this one. Um, there's, I'll probably create a little sample for this, but essentially, uh, all you need is the uh, is to show the um, a, a specific column for that, and if it's a true type one, the checkbox will render that automatically for you. So, uh, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, it looks like we've uh, you've answered them. Awesome, awesome. All right, you know, um, I think what I'm going to do in, in the future, you know, I, I kind of briefly just covered MVC three. Um, you know, as I mentioned, one of the uh, one of the recent MVC conference was held by Javier Lozano. How many, uh, Javier is a fantastic ASP.NET MVC MVP, and uh, I think he's willing. So we're going to have maybe uh, uh, you know 
him or somebody like him present uh, specifically on MVC best practices and so forth. So stay tuned for that and definitely check out Mark's webinar next week. And with that, Amanda, sorry about that. That's my uh, reminders on my iPhone there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so with that, I am done, and I thank you very much for joining this webinar. Sorry about awesome. my voice, by the way. No, it's fine. It's kind of deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Mahul, and thanks to the uh, our team behind the scenes. So yeah, a quick, quick peek, quick peek into next week. Uh, next Monday, February 28th, uh, Julian Bucknell is back with uh, his JavaScript 2. Writing JavaScript when you already know C Sharp can seem like a piece of cake. After all, it's a C-like language, so what can go wrong? Julian continues a series of webinars that teaches you the basics of writing JavaScript. This webinar will concentrate on objects and assumes that you've watched part one. If you haven't yet, you can watch JavaScript one at tv.devexpress.com. And uh, like Mahul said, next Tuesday, March 1st at noon Pacific Standard Time, Mark Miller and Rory Becker are back with using CodeRush and ASP.NET. They'll reveal how to accelerate your ASP.NET development with CodeRush. So that's next Tuesday. And Thursday, March 3rd, Async from scratch from a language lover's perspective from C Sharp MVP John Skeet. You've probably seen some of the excitement around the async feature of C Sharp 5, but how does it all work under the hood? And what does it mean when we say we're registering a continuation to run when a task completes? How much behavior is actually prescribed by the language? In a shocking break from other presentations, John may well attempt to talk about async without the safety net of a flashy GUI. Instead, we'll create some very simple, supposedly asynchronous code, some of which won't even do anything asynchronous at all. Just don't tell the compiler. We have a great lineup of webinars scheduled through March. You can register online at devexpress.com slash webinars. And again, if you missed anything from this webinar or you want to review any previous webinars, you can visit us on the DevExpress channel at tv.devexpress.com. Again, thanks so much, Mahul. Thank you all for joining us, and thanks for choosing DevExpress.